to the Ofgood family. Today we are making super simple, easy peasy cheesy. I've called it that because I want to make loads of money and it was a bit clickbaity and I thought maybe that will help. Anyway, let's get on. Okay, another reason I called it that was this is the entire ingredients and it takes two minutes to make. Well, a little bit more than that. You need some milk. I go for blue top because there's more niceness in it. Um, when I say that I mean fat. Um, some uh, white vinegar, some salt and garlic. I'm using um, a garlic mill just it's easier and it's you know it's already uh, dehydrated and grindable. Okay this is part one and this is the hardest part of it. Opening this bottle. Can you see like there's this thing on it and it's really difficult to peel off without getting it everywhere. There we go I've done it. So there we go. The rest of it is pretty simple from here on. Put some milk in a pan, it doesn't really matter how much you use. No one's judging you, use what you like. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to heat that slowly. And stir constantly. Right, uh, the boss, I mean the wife, I mean the lodger, I mean Crystal, has just said that she doesn't want garlic in this cheese and it's her birthday tomorrow which is why I'm making it, so... This cheese just got one ingredient easier. Basically we just want to heat this just above um, body temperature. Um, you can do the finger test which is literally put your finger in it. If it's warmer than your finger, it's above body temperature. If you take your finger out and it's just bone, it's a little bit too hot. It's getting there, it's not quite hot enough yet. You could use a thermometer by the way, but there's really no need. It's literally just heat the milk up at this point. It doesn't even have to be, it just, it doesn't even have to be above body temperature to be honest. You could do it all straight away with cold milk. It wouldn't work as well, it would work as fast because Anyone who knows anything about chemistry, heat is a catalyst, and that's why we heat it up. But it doesn't need to be heated up. You could get away with not. Okay, now it's hot enough. I'm going to turn the heat right, right, right down so I can add a bit of salt. And this is like salt to taste, and again, it's, it's all about um, getting it to the right balance for you. Um, I'm sort of hitting and hoping again like I do with a lot of my recipes. Um, I didn't sort of measure out the milk so I've got no, I can't tell you, ah, oh, this is what you need to do to make it, this is how salty you need to make this amount, because I just, just don't care to be honest. I just, this is how I make most of my stuff, is about, this is what it's going to be like, and again, just put your finger in, tastes like salty milk, that's enough for me, do you know what I mean? Right. So, next, we take our distilled malt villager, did it again, and we just pour some in. That'll probably do, but I might add a little bit more. Now straight away, can you see it's already started to separate out the curds in the way. Now at this point, I turn off the heat completely, and it's nowhere near enough, I can already tell you that. Can you see though that it's getting lumps in it? So we're gonna add some more vinegar. Again, I'm gonna go with the same amount I put in a second ago. We'll just keep adding until we think we're getting the right amount out. Now when you're doing this properly with cheese, like making proper cheese, you use rennet instead of vinegar, but they're both doing the same thing. They're both um, separating out the whey and the curds. That would have triggered some people not saying curds and whey. That's why I did it. But look, if we lift up, can you see we're getting, we're getting it all out now. I'm going to add some more. And that's probably enough. That's probably all I'm going to add. I may add some more. But I'm just going to mix it in. Just see how much we can get to drop out. Okay. 
there we go as you can see now it's curdling really nicely all you got all this weight the idea is if you can and I'm not gonna try today but get this the way as see-through as possible and to be honest I actually think I've done quite well actually considering I just chucked it all in and hoped right the next thing to do is get some cheesecloth if you do not have cheesecloth there is a million other things you can use you can use kitchen roll you can just use a strainer if you like a strainer works just as well and that's what I'm gonna use I do have cheesecloth but I'm too cheap to use it when I don't need to we take our sieve and our pan or receptacle to take the whey now there's loads of things you can do with whey but I would advise not using these ones because they are very vinegary very acidic there is probably stuff you still can do with it though but you tip it out now you can just leave it to sieve through but um, I just start to take it away from the edges and it just gives the um, the way somewhere to actually go because you've got to remember this is quite a thick little concoction isn't it okay so now I've got another strainer because I'm awesome and we're just gonna well why, why am I doing that hang on let's just push that way to the outside way man way get away that's how cool I am right next I'm going to pour this stuff in there you go ok and again I'm just going to let it drain through try not to actually scrape if you are using a sieve try not to scrape the sieve because you will push the actual um, curds through or the, the cheese through sorry and you don't want that now I'm in the process of making a cheese press and we could just chuck this in squeeze it into a like not it would never be a solid solid well it would actually you could make a solid block but you'd have to do it over a couple of days but that's you know this isn't designed for that sort of thing this is easy squeezy cheesy thing whatever I called it before that was such a catchy title right one second okay and there we go this is this is what we've got there's still a lot of um, way in this so we're just gonna keep turning it letting it you know dry itself out now you could at this point um, eat some without anyone knowing but you could actually put this between some kitchen roll and squeeze it out which I think I might do shall I? can I be bothered? do you know what I'm gonna because it's still got lots and lots of way in normally I'd leave it like this and I'd just leave it to drain out for over the next few hours but I'm hungry now as I've said use cheesecloth it's much much easier less stress but it does cost money now kitchen roll costs money too but not as much as cheesecloth so what I'm going to do plonk this out on some cheesecloth um, on some kitchen roll sorry above my station there plonk it on there and there's about four or five sheets of it there and I'm just going to plonk this on top right now at this point you grab yourself a container and you plop it in now unlike other cheeses that you might make or wish to make this one is edible right this second and to be honest I'm just gonna try a tiny bit obviously by making this for Crystal's birthday could do with some garlic right so that is how simple it is it's heat up some milk add some vinegar you've got yourself a cheese um, I needed to add a little bit more salt it definitely needs it and um, my opinion needs garlic but crystal doesn't like it it's for her 
you know, I'm not going to argue about that. But let's say that both of you and whoever's going to eat it have different tastes. You can quite easily, because it's a very crumbly cheese, you can actually add your salt and your pepper, mix it around, and it will infuse within it anyway. So you don't have to make it at the point where you're, you know, at the making stage. You can add all the nice stuff at the end. So don't worry about it. I'm going to add some garlic in a minute. Thanks for watching. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.